land. It's important, no matter who you are, where you come from, to acknowledge your ancestry, your bloodline, your roots. And I'm really deeply saddened that these people did not welcome us to have a voice as Aboriginal people in their rally, their peaceful demonstration. Shame on them. You know, that just again shows a demonstration that we are the invisible nation. Yeah. and that people don't understand we are still here we're not history we are still alive and our voice needs to be heard and our voice needs to be acknowledged and our treaty rights need to be again acknowledged and re revamped in some ways because this is what's going on people come from other lands thinking that they have more rights here than we do as an Aboriginal nation which is absolutely absurd and then you're going to walk around talking about peaceful va uh, values and yet turn away people who want to work with you. I asked for three minutes to speak on their mic. We have the same values. We're fighting for the same things in this land, a peaceful existence. But we want to be acknowledged as the indigenous people of this land. I think we deserve that. Here, here. I don't know more. I don't know more. I don't know more. I don't know more. You know, it is about love. But like I said earlier to another individual, I said, when we have equal say, we will have equal power. Today, it doesn't exist that way. Many of us don't have a say in what the government is doing with policies, what the government is doing with legislation, what the government is doing with procedures. Many of us are sitting wondering what is going on as the money is disappearing into other people's pockets who are jet setting their cars all over the world. Seriously. People are starving in the streets, dying in the streets, while someone is paying to get their car sent to another country at the taxpayer's expense and they have the nerve to get mad at Aboriginal people and claim we're using up their taxes? Look at what your government is doing. Shame on them. Yay! Shame on Harper. Shame on anybody who wants to destroy what is vital to the land, and that's air, fire, water, and earth. Our ceremonies teach how to live well and understanding that we need those four elements. What good is self-esteem if you haven't got a meal to eat? Shame? There's cutbacks lately for the uh, physically disabled. Hello? Is there no humanity left in our government? No. Is there? No. Is there any values? No. Right? People come from other lands and talk about their peaceful values while showing disrespect to a First Nations elder? Excuse me? Shame on you. I said, I wouldn't go to your land and do what you're doing to me here. You're on Treaty 6 territory. His response was, I don't care. <laughs> really? Yeah. I said, let's see if you have this rally next year. Peace to you. You know, it really hurts when you're hearing that anger in my voice. When you're hearing these words that are saying, stop the nonsense. To me, that's violent to say no. I've lived in this country all my life. I was born here. I'm First Nations. 
and I've been made to feel most of my life not to belong? I don't belong here? You do belong here. You really? Do. I don't know more. And to have someone who comes from another country to have the away. nerve to tell me I can't no. say a few no. words? Shame on them. No. Shame on them. That's not right. That's not right. And we are a peaceful people. That's what the pipe is about. I'm a pipe carrier. But it is about truth as well. And we need to get stronger in our voices and saying, you know, humanity. Come back to a place of humanity. You know, you want to talk about values? Then don't hurt your neighbor. And certainly don't hurt the people who invited you to their land. Don't do that. Don't walk all over us. We're human beings. You know, we have feelings, we have needs, and we've been putting up with too much for too long because we are shy in a lot of ways. We are timid in a lot of ways. We're taught to walk gently on this earth like a prayer. That's what we're taught. And other people are taught to walk over us as a people, and it's unacceptable anymore. I don't want my grandchildren to go through what I've gone through, the racism, the discrimination, the hatred. I don't want them to go through that because it's all about money. It's all about profit. Get rid of the Indians because they're in the way of putting in things that destroy the earth, the water. Get rid of them. Cut out the treaties because that's what legally stops us from being able to accomplish what we want to do in regards to pipelines and other things that build and build and destroy. We don't need all that much to live. If you have a roof over your head, which a lot of people don't, if you have food to eat, you know, if you have clothing to wear, it doesn't have to be Calvin Klein. It doesn't have to be all these name brands. And there's nothing wrong with a plain t-shirt and baggy old jeans or baggy old whatever. You know, we got to work towards the media saying, stop the nonsense of teaching young people that, oh, you got to be a highfalutin Hollywood actor or whatever. There's nothing wrong with being simple folk. Absolutely nothing wrong with gardening. Absolutely nothing wrong with teaching your child it's okay to love another human being. And never walk past a human being laying on the street. You don't know if they're, but they're still breathing. And I see it time after time in this city. People begging for a couple of cents begging for a couple of cents in this country? Seriously? It shouldn't be going on. It is so wrong. So for a moment, let's just take this moment and think about life, how important it is. I'm not going to be around to see the results of the work that I do. People don't like me. People don't like what I have to say. But I've been living in this city over 50 years and I've been seeing what's going on. And I said, you know what? It used to be a wonderful city to live in. People were not living on the streets. The homeless and the numbers that I see now did not exist when I was a child. It was unheard of to walk by somebody without raising hand or bending down and saying, are you okay? Can I help you out? Can I take you somewhere? Can I do something for you? This thing called tough love that comes into play. Tough love? Well, those people need more love. Not tough love. They need more love. We need more love in this world. For these people to have the nerve to tell me I can't have three minutes of their mic time? Seriously? Three minutes in the whole scheme of things? Give me a break. And when they talk to me like my ancestors don't matter, my bloodline doesn't matter in this country. It hurts. And when I get hurt, I get mad like any human being. You know, and I, I can feel the fire just burning up inside of me and I'm wanting to just rage. Rage at all the many years of discrimination, the many years of hatred that flew towards me, the many years of people calling me down because of the color of my skin or because I'm the First Nations in this land or even just because I'm a woman. And I just said, ancestors, put some water on the fire because I don't want to, I don't want to be violent at a peaceful rally. Let me walk my talk. Let me walk my talk. 
Now my talk is about love. But sometimes love says we get mad enough to do something about it because we love our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. We love the water, we love the land, we love our cultures, we love and want to keep them alive. So for a moment, think about your ancestry. Every time you speak, you are speaking behalf of your ancestors, your representation of your past bloodline, as well as a representation of those to come after you. So for just a moment, let's just be silent and think about that. And what does the word sacred mean to anybody anymore? I was taught my life is sacred, your life is sacred. This is all sacred. It's a gift, a gift. We're supposed to share it equally, not one half more than the other. That's unheard of in my culture, the original culture, the original teachings. It's unheard of that one person would have more than another. It's unheard of originally for someone to be homeless, unheard of for someone to be starving, unheard of. That was brought in. Those values are brought in. No different than these people bringing a value, speaking of peace, not walking their talk. And being able to say it doesn't matter whose treaty land this is. The nerve. Well, it'll matter. It'll matter next time they make an application. It will matter. I guarantee you that. Because I'm not going to stop here with that. I don't like being insulted. Because when you insult me, you insult my ancestors. And you insult my grandchildren. And we should, we should all think like that. So thank you so much for this moment of being able to vent and rant and, and share. Thank you so much for hearing me. The gift of your ears. Yes, thank you. Hi, hi. Thank you, God. Speaker is well bit um, small for me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my name is Shannon Hool, and I'm from Sad Lake Cree Nation. I'm within Treaty 6 territory. And I just wanted to welcome everybody to my territory that my ancestors are from. Um, you know, what Taz was talking and what she was saying was the same thing that my ancestors talk about. And I remember going to school and they asked me, why do you want to be a teacher? And I said, one of the reasons why I want to be a teacher is because when I teach children, I'm going to teach them that we still exist. We are not in the history books in our buckskins. We are still here. No matter whether you have tried to kill us off, you have tried to dehumanize us, we are still here! And I say that with the most respect because I have to. I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to my ancestors. I just did a, did a um, walk through a residential school last week with my students. I teach grade four. And these kids, as I was walking through that school, I had to tell them about their history, my history. Three generations of my people were put in that school, dragged by police, put in granary trucks like cattle, not known where they were going. All they knew was they had to be taken away from their parents. And their parents were helpless. Now, I don't know about you, but I know what that feels like. When your child is taken away and you can't do nothing because a government tells you that if you do anything, we will kill you. We will lock you up. You know, many kids didn't go home. 
I just found out last year my grandmother, her little brother, was pushed off the second floor of a residential school by a priest. Now that's supposed to be someone who promises to love, to be peaceful. You know what Taz is talking? I'm not here to be talking about anger. I'm not even here about, but she has a point. If you're going to talk about peace, love, nonviolence, truth, truth, then walk your talk. <laughs>